Leon. Leon, Leon! Come on, let's go. Keep your mind on your business. Today we are joined by the man that thinks hygiene is a greeting. My nephew slash cousin T-Bone. T-Bone, good to have you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, boys, for letting me have me on y'all show it. It's been a dream of mine being in the family. You'd think I'd have more time to be here, but thank you, thank you. What are some of the some of the animals that, that you have taken with you both? Well, let's see here. We've got a uh, a deer, a turkey, a crow. <laughs> My name is Travis T-Bone Turner, uh, co-host of Bone Collector and Realtree. Um, yeah, how I how I got started into archery was uh, kind of a kind of a neat story in itself. I uh, I grew up as a hunter and a and fisherman and loving the outdoors and stuff like that. But at this time, I was eight, nine, ten years old, somewhere around there. I, was, I know I was in, still in elementary school, and my dad had bought me a bow um, for good grades. And uh, to be honest with you, I think that's probably the last time that I <laughs> that I got good grades. My dad didn't know, you know, he was a hunter. Like I said, he didn't know much about uh, archery, and, and he wanted to get me started uh, with a bow. And he bought a bow. It was a 45-pound recurve. You know, I was happy. I got me a bow and, you know, I was just bending the string and like so many folks that are introduced into archery, you simply bend the string and you just love watching an arrow fly and, and, and that was me, you know. I couldn't pull it all the way back and I did hit my arm a time or two and, and loved it, but I realized real quick that, you know, as I had too much bow or more bow than I was able to pull. So that was kind of my first introduction into archery. kind of set that to the wayside you know as I'm becoming a teenager I'm, I'm doing sports in uh, you know middle school and high school and as well as still hunting and fishing but primarily you know uh, hunting with shotgun and rifle and such and really wasn't paying much attention to the boat I'm growing up I'm getting stronger and you know I'm on the football team in high school and such and still not thinking anything about it because of that bad experience and just out of high school I'm fishing loving fishing and I'm hunting and my friends, is, they were asking me to, uh, you know, join their hunting club. I joined their hunting club, but they were going to be bow hunting. And they told me, said, look, man, we're going to start shooting our bow throughout the summer. We're not going to be fishing nowhere near as much. You should buy yourself a bow. And back of my head, I'm thinking, man, I can't even pull 45 pounds. Even though, you know, I graduated high school, I was 265 pounds and six foot one or so. And just still had that in my head that I couldn't pull past 45 pounds. I, I was really scared to try so my friends I, I guess you could call it peer pressure you know is a uh, um, it, it's on a Wednesday they said you might as well get a bow you're gonna be hunting with us you get you know five or six extra weeks in hunting and you know we're gonna be shooting our bow in the yard you might as well go ahead and, and get one so I went to the local uh, pro shop sporting goods store and while we were there my buddies were with me I'm getting my bow set up the guy pulls an 80 pound bow off the shelf and He's working on my bow and he backs it off and he says, listen, man, he goes, 64 pounds is, that's about as, as light as I can go with this thing. And I said, oh, that'll be fine, that'll be fine. And we leave the store and I go back home. And I'm in my room and I'm thinking, oh man, this is gonna be embarrassing I'm all by myself and I'm not gonna be able to get this thing back. So I said, one, two, three. And I yanked it back and just about ripped the, the wheels off of it. And it was, it was funny how the feeling was. It was just like a, a flush went over me, it's like, Oh my gosh, I'm gonna be able to do this. I mean, like, it was like instantly. I was like, this is gonna be so much better than what I had thought. I bought the bow on a Wednesday. We shot our bows on Thursday and I got it sighted in and we shot on Friday as well as Saturday. And Saturday evening, 
they uh, said, are you gonna go to the tournament with us tomorrow? And I was like, man, I just bought a bow on a Wednesday. There is no way I'm gonna go shoot a tournament. And they said, look, we've never been. We're just gonna go shoot this and, and have fun, go with us. We jumped in the bow hunter novice class, which was, you know, probably 30, 35 yards max. And we go out through there and it's unknown distance. You have to judge the yardage and we're shooting into Excelsior bells and we're shooting these paper uh, two dimensional targets. And we go through the woods and we shoot, you know, I, I can't even remember if it was 20 or 25 targets. So it's a lot like golf. You show up at the end and you got a group and you had a good time. And I was just happy that I still had all my arrows and, and out of my five or six buddies, I had the best score, so I was on cloud nine. Then after everybody had turned their scores in, there was like 30 something people in the class and I was tops. I had won the whole class, the, the number one score in the bow hunter novice. So yeah, that right there, if I wasn't gut hooked, I was certainly gut hooked from this point on. I loved archery. If there was a tournament within 150 miles of our house, we were going to it. Fortunately, got to be pretty decent and uh, fortunate enough to win my first state championship 1990 and then in 91 I was fortunate enough to win the uh, what later would be the ASA World Championship which is the largest outdoor 3D style tournament of its kind. So let's join Travis Turner shooting in the men's pro division. Travis is a steady as a rock, he's a big guy, been working real hard this year, been shooting real well. Looks like he's, he's doing good here. At the end of the first day, Travis Turner led the men's pro division. Randy Chappell was close behind with a 199. Travis Turner had this to say about the first round. It was, it, it was real tough. And I guess it was the age too. You know, as a, as a late teenager or early 20s, you're kind of finding yourself. And I had found it, meaning like, I knew I loved the outdoors and I knew I wouldn't mind doing something fishing wise. But then when I seen how, how, um, much I loved and how, I mean, deep down, couldn't get enough passionate I was about archery and how I was real lucky to have a knack for it. I quit my job with Mercedes Benz. Me and a buddy of mine opened up our own store and the store's name was Archery Unlimited and uh, we opened it in 1994. And um, where we're located is halfway between Columbus, Georgia and Atlanta, Georgia. So it's only about 45 minutes from Columbus. Well, Columbus is where Realtree Camouflage is based. David Blanton lives in the same town that I had moved to, as well as Michael lived the next town over. And, and I'd met them and, and told them, you know, and you know, I just wanted to make sure that anybody that they had uh, coming in or they was gonna be entertaining, whether it's a country music star or a baseball player or somebody, you know, that they were taking hunting or, or introducing into archery, I wanted to be the liaison so that I could help uh, introduce them and get them set up correctly so that they would have a great experience and then share that with whoever they would talk to. Kind of a, 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 a backward step to how it was for me. That's when our partnership and, uh, you know, and uh, friendship began. So I started setting up all their bows and we just had like-minded uh, personalities, just got along with the guys, all similar in age. And that kind of segued into the Monster Buck series. And then uh, David Blanton had come to me and they said, we want you to be the sidekick with Jeff Foxworthy in these videos. So five minutes before we were starting to film, they said, what are we gonna call you? You know, we need a little more of a redneck hiccified name than just Travis. And I said, never had been called this ever before. And I just said, what about T-Bone? Well, they loved it. And I'm thinking this will be my 15 minutes of fame. You know, uh, you know, I'm glad to be a part of this, but this will be a one and done. He's been T-Bone. We've got I've been Willie. Let's see. He's been Billy. Ants. You get one and one and then when you shoot the ant hills. Let's see. And everybody got... just, you know, women, kids, uh, people watching the DVDs and the VHS, they absolutely loved it because we were bringing comedy and parody to, you know, hunting and people could laugh at it and you know, it broke up the monotony of just hunts, so we kept bringing it back more and more and more, and you know, I guess like a snowball going downhill, that kind of was the, created the monster of T-Bone, I guess you could say. In fact, my buddy T-Bone's a pretty good sized old boy. He's up in this tree right here. Woo, T-Bone, are you on up there? Whoa. Did that help? Worked great. You gonna hunt here tonight? I'm probably gonna go over by the cornfield, all right? Let go of my leg. Hey, get my bow! Michael and Nick and myself all worked in some form or fashion with Realtree from the mid-90s all the way up to the 2000s. We're all about the same age. 
We all come from humble beginnings. We basically didn't have two nickels to rub together. And Michael wanted to start uh, our own show, and he asked me and Nick if we would um, would love to be a part of it. And it took me all of about two seconds to to answer Michael and say, "Yeah, absolutely, I'd love to join you and Nick and and start Bone Collector." You know, we figured it might work two or three years. We was going to give it what we got. Hopefully, it uh, uh, people took to it, and here we are, you know, 15, 16 years later, and, you know, people are still interested in watching our crazy annex. We wanted folks to be able to tune into the show, and naturally, it's a hunting show, and naturally, you know, we all have the aspirations of killing the biggest buck or the biggest elk or mule deer or what have you. But at the same time, we felt like we were connected and we were from the blue collar worker, the everyday Billy Joe lunch bucket, the guy who you know, has to work 40 to 60 hours a week and he only gets one day a week. We felt like we, we was him and we, we was that person. And we was wanting to celebrate that by the camaraderie and the fellowship within the camp. You know, the word professional hunter gets used a lot and we can't, we hate that big time. We do not want to be called professional hunters because half of our audience is probably way better hunters than we are. We like to be labeled as uh, an outdoor entertainer. Basically, it's just documenting uh, our life and times and the times we have on the road. The only difference between us and, you know, the, the folks that we're, you know, shaking hands and hugging are, we, you know, we get a we get a camera in our face and we're documenting it. That's the brotherhood. By far, my biggest Georgia book. And it's your birthday. Happy birthday, son. Thanks, Dad. Yeah, blow out the candles. <laughs> brotherhood. It, it really is. It's a unspoken language. You can pass a guy you know, walking down a Walmart aisle or you can, you know, pass a guy at a store and you see him got a camouflage hat on or you see the, you know, the brand of a Hoyt or the brand of a bone collector or something like that. And it's like an unspoken language. You throw a finger up and it's like, man, that guy gets me. I, you know, we are, we are of one. Before you're all mad at me. You know, two years ago, I was diagnosed with um, myxofibrosarcoma, which is a, a cancer. It um, was in my leg, actually. Really, really rapid uh, tumor. Hey, T-Bone here. Uh, not to be confused with Uncle Fester. It, it grew from the size of a grape in, in July to by September, it was the size of three or four large portobello mushrooms. I had to have my leg amputated. It, would, it was, uh, the chemo was successful in stopping its spread. However, we had a nodule on my lung, as well as uh, I had to remove. There were, it was just so intertwined within my leg, there was no way to save my leg. Certainly things have changed. You just got to adapt to what we've been dealt. Um, I can still pull a bow. I can still work on bows. I can still do a lot of things. I can hunt. I've looked at it from this standpoint, and I've said it a bunch of times. Um, you know, if I never got to kill another animal, a cockroach or anything, I have far outlived my dream. I am very, very satisfied. I'm so appreciative with everything that's been given to me, my career, my family, my friends. I value them so much and it certainly makes you look at what is important in life and, and uh, to treasure moments and to treasure uh, time and, and uh, all the memories that has been made. I can't imagine life, I mean, for the last 35, 40 years, archery has been a part of my everyday existence. I mean, even laying in the hospital bed or when you're, you know, down and out, you're you're thinking of bow setups, you know, quieting a bow down, tuning, trajectory, FOC, arrow builds. No matter how good you get, no matter how much you know, you can always get better. And then uh, the trajectory, not to sound punny at all, but the trajectory of my life drastically changed once I started shooting a bow. 
whether it's outdoors or hunting, fishing, the whole outdoor experience, land management or what have you, um, it has provided so much for me uh, internally, um, peace of mind, therapy, uh, as well as financial and provided for my family a, a, a great career, some fantastic memories and filling a freezer. With that said, no ifs, ands, or buts, um, it is by far more than just a bow to me. It has been my whole life, my whole world, my whole existence. It's more than just a bow. Oh, okay. What a fuck, man. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. We're out of time, but once again, I want to thank you for watching the spotlight on deer. All the way down to Georgia now But to that train Run out of train